so lovely here. I'm in Western Australia in this beautiful woodland and I'm here for another job working away. It's been really fun. I'm filming animals and I've been thinking a lot about the wildlife situation here because I've been filming it every day and looking for different critters here and there. And you know, I've noticed how like depauperate these areas are, how scarce mammals are in places like national parks. And obviously lots of Australian animals are most active by night. And so it makes sense that you don't see a lot of our wildlife by day. But regardless of that, the situation remains that, you know, wildlife here has been smashed by things like foxes and cats. And obviously there's a whole lot of other factors that affect our wildlife, habitat loss, the changing climate, etc. Not discounting any of those, but I wanted to keep a focus on introduced predators, the feral cat and red fox. And in this park in particular, but not exclusively, they play a huge, huge role in the destruction of the biodiversity here. And you can see big signs as you drive into this park, 1080 poison baits, be careful, don't let your dog off the lead, humans be aware, yada, yada, yada. 1080, shocking stuff, it's a terrible bait. It's sort of put on this pedestal by parks organizations as a, as a silver bullet to all of our problems, but actually it's a pretty heinous poison. It's banned in many, many countries. And it's basically a band-aid solution. It's unsustainable and it's not really long-term, I, I don't believe. And small parks like this would struggle to reintroduce the dingo because it's so small and surrounded by sheep farming. And I, I, you know, it's just, there's no way that, there's no conceivable way that dingoes would be ever permitted to be reintroduced into a small national park like this. It's surrounded by sheep farming. It would just face complete and utter public scrutiny and it'd be just a nightmare. But it got me thinking about what about reintroducing Tasmanian devils? They're much smaller, smaller home ranges, and they once existed on the mainland. They were once widespread, which is crazy, and it surprises a lot of people actually. Um, there's fossil deposits in caves in South Australia and Western Australia, and you can even see rock art of Tasmanian devils in the northwest of Western Australia. I've seen it with my own eyes and filmed it for a BBC program called Seven Worlds, One Planet. It's petroglyphs carved into the rocks, thousands of years old, and there's devils and thylacines, which all roamed, which all once roamed up in these parts of Australia, despite them being now restricted to Tasmania. So they're actually a potential, potentially viable surrogate top order predator to reintroduce into Australia. There's two possible reasons really why I think reintroducing Tasmanian devils back to the mainland could be a viable biodiversity conservation uh, solution in Australia to help control foxes and cats. And the first is that, like I mentioned, they could be an effective top order surrogate species for the dingo in areas where the dingo can't be reintroduced and they may be able to control foxes and cats. And the second reason I think it could be wise to reintroduce devils is that you might have heard of the DFTD or devil facial tumor disease and that's a deadly and transmissible cancer that's wiped out around 80% of devils in Tasmania and it's passed on by uh, bodily fluids and as many of you would know devils are feisty little buggers they nip and they bite and they squabble and that's meant that an animal with the cancer very readily passes it on to its mates when they're feeding or mating or generally just having a squabble which is part of their natural history so reintroducing devils back to the mainland could be a really effective way to establish an insurance population away from Tasmania of disease-free devils. So they're the two main reasons I think this is a really interesting idea and why the concept should at least be explored further. And I think it has some genuine scientific merit and I wanna talk about that 
more in this video. So we've established that devils are very cool animals and that they're suffering from a terrible disease, a transmissible cancer called the devil facial tumor disease that's wiped out a huge proportion of their population in Tasmania. So what are some solutions? How can we go about protecting these devils and maybe getting the added benefit of some ecosystem services. I floated the idea that we could actually reintroduce Tasmanian devils back to the mainland where they were once found. Not only will they be carrying out a surrogate topwater predator role, and perhaps in many areas where the dingo has been removed due to poison baiting, but that they are, we can also get the added benefit of protecting devils by ensuring their population putting healthy populations back to the mainland or other islands as a way to safeguard against their potential extinction. Now this has already been done on Mariah Island, which is a small island off the east coast of Tasmania where devils have actually been reintroduced there. I've been there myself. It's an awesome place and the devils exist freely on that island and they're safeguarded from any potential disease threat on the main, from the main Tasmanian population. So that's really exciting and it shows that it can actually be, do be done. Now obviously we've got devils and sanctuaries on the mainland, but I'm really interested in the idea of repopulating the mainland with free-ranging devils, releasing them back into the wild. And we don't have to start by putting them straight back into national parks and just letting them go and causing concern for people who are worried about the possible ramifications of releasing devils back to the mainland. We don't have to start big at first. We could look at areas where we might be able to fence off certain areas so that they're contained and we can explore and analyze what's going on in there and use these areas as case studies before we look at larger reintroductions. Obviously reintroductions or introductions come with some risk and we know that better than any other country on earth in Australia, we've, had a, we've got a horrible track record with animals like goats and cane toads and pigs and deer. But this isn't a cold introduction, it's a reintroduction of a native species that was found here not so long ago. Some say as little as 500 years ago, but the weight of the evidence suggests that it's probably more like three and a half thousand years ago or so. so the other animals in the environment have evolved alongside devils for millennia. So we're bringing an animal back that's familiar to these environments. It's not a novel reintroduction. Even though the idea itself is quite novel and exciting, the animal itself isn't novel and that reduces our risk uh, to the ecosystem more broadly. So that's one reason why I think it could be a really exciting prospect. And devils are a scavenger but they're also a predator as well, and they're known to take prey, small and medium-sized mammals especially, um, but there's no reason to suggest why they wouldn't actually kill and capture um, larger sick and injured marsupials and mammals too. Interestingly, foxes had been introduced to Tasmania multiple times and they never actually took a foothold. They never were able to establish their populations and one of the best uh, potential reasons for that is that devils actually had that fox niche on lock. They had, the, had it on lockdown and did not allow the red fox to get a foothold in Tasmania. And that's because they share things like prey and den sites. And so devils are just too well evolved for the Australian landscape. And they were able to nudge foxes out in that case and uh, extrapolating on this information, they might be able to do the very same thing on the mainland. Now I'm not suggesting that devils are a silver bullet and they're gonna fix the problem, but they may be a very helpful and useful tool to help control uh, the effects of foxes and cats. And I'm really interested in exploring this idea. And we've got to look at the data from the past and if they've done a good job in Tasmania before, that is reason to suggest they might be able to do it again on the mainland. And we need to look into these options and explore this. And, as part of my PhD many years ago, I actually did look into this and, and wrote a paper about reintroducing Tasmanian devils back to the mainland. And I won't go into uh, the details specifically or, or the methodology, and I'll link it in the comments if you want to check it out. But basically, we were interested in the idea of obviously bringing the devils back to the mainland, and we wanted to test this. And we used mathematical models to actually uh, run scenarios 
uh, uh, potential scenarios of, of reintroducing devils back to the mainland. And what we found was overwhelmingly positive. That was that the devil had positive effects for biodiversity. They, small and medium sized mammals were able to uh, flourish. Devils appeared to have a negative effect on foxes, a small negative effect on cats, and they sort of had a, a, a muted top order predator effect. And that's really, really exciting. And I believe it's the first step towards um, building a strong case to reintroduce devils. We need to have some kind of science behind this before we go and do it. And uh, this, this paper was a, an attempt at doing that. And it's not perfect by any means, but I think my colleagues and I were as thorough as we possibly could be. And we used the tools that we had available and uh, I think we've put forward a, a reasonably convincing case and many more studies are obviously needed to, um, to get to the point where we, we believe that we've got a really, really strong case, but the preliminary results are very exciting. So these are my thoughts on bringing Tassie devils back to the mainland. Maybe we could even call them Aussie devils or Australian devils. There's some risk involved, no doubt, and we need to explore what those potential risks are but I believe that the risk to Tasmanian devils is far greater if we don't really consider some of these more novel and nuanced approaches to conservation. And who knows, we might even have the dual benefit of having some of our top order predator ecosystem services restored. So I believe it's got some merit and I'm really interested to hear what you think about the idea.